Ones, what a privilege it is once again to be here tonight and to discuss um, the Crossroads Bible study with you. And I'm so grateful to be an instrument tonight to share the message with you. So let's start in prayer before we continue. Heavenly Father, thank you that we are healthy today, that we have hearing. Father, that we have technology that we can use to benefit from and to hear from your word. Father, I am an instrument and I am completely dependent on your Holy Spirit to come and use me tonight to share this message. We ask that in each of our loved ones' hearts that the Holy Spirit will convict us of, of truth and bring revelation with regards to this topic tonight that we will discuss a Christian worldview. And Father, bring that truth and plant it into our hearts tonight that it will bear fruit in the way in which we view the world. In Jesus' name, amen. So tonight we will be discussing the biblical worldview and last night we heard so wonderfully about how we can construct a worldview and the topic tonight makes me very excited because this is where this is to which we can strive in viewing the world and the everyday life. Um, so the biblical worldview is a thoroughly God-centered worldview. God is the beginning and the end of all things. He's the source and the goal of all life. If the sum total of reality were viewed as a circle, God is the center, the circumference and everything in between. As Glenn Martin puts it, the heart of the biblical Christian worldview is God's applicability to all of life. This means God is the answer to all the questions of life and he is actively involved in all areas of life. God is constantly constantly reaching out to man in all spheres of life, calling him to acknowledge and embrace his role in all spheres and live in a manner consistent with it. In the slide, you will see the questions that were discussed last night that a worldview needs to answer. And just once again, we will be discussing the following four points. The biblical presupposition, the philosophical question, the primary question, and the practical question. So let's start with the biblical presuppositions. Glenn Martin discusses three presuppositions of a biblical Christian worldview, which you can see on the next slide. Firstly, God and his kingdom are spiritual and all-encompassing. Secondly, man is prophet, priest, and king under a sovereign God. And thirdly, there can be no institution between God and men. So let's start with God and his kingdom of spiritual and all-encompassing. For the biblical Christian, everything starts and finishes with God. God and his kingdom are spiritual. They cannot be limited by time and space. God is in all and he is in all. God and his kingdom are also all-encompassing. They include everything that is. 
Nothing can exist or function apart from God. However, we live in an age of a non-theism that has pervaded the thinking of most Christians. They are not theistic, which is God-centered, in their thinking and pay only lip service to God because he is not the starting and finishing point of their lives. Anything short of starting and ending with God himself is a man-centered and not God-centered. Do you, do you realize that it is possible to be saved and yet have a, and not have a biblical worldview? Although you may know Jesus as your Savior, if you do not live your life as if he is applicable to all of your life, you probably do not have a biblical worldview. This makes sense because somehow our worldview has been infiltrated through the world and the world's view of what we should see through series, social media, and even through our upbringing. Secondly, we will look at man is prophet, priest, and king under a sovereign God. We will discuss each of these separately, so let's start with priest. Every believer is a priest. That is, every Christian has direct access to God through the finished work of Jesus Christ. No man is dependent on an elite priesthood or a pastor or any of such kind for his access to God. We have it th freely through Christ. Secondly, we will discuss the king. God created man to exercise dominion over creation under God, caring for creation on his behalf and using it for his glory. As Christians, we need neither absolutize nor trivialize science but keep it in its proper place. Science is not the source of all knowledge, but it is a source of valuable knowledge to help us manage the world of God. Thirdly, a prophet. Every believer is a prophet. A prophet is one who receives and proclaims God's words. God lets man know truly, but not exhaustively on the basis of the Bible. Every believer has access to divinely revealed truth about God, man, and creation. Therefore, every believer is to be a prophet in his family, his church, and his workplace, his social circle, circle and also the community. So then the third point is there can be no institution between God and man. Jesus Christ is the only mediator between God and man. Neither the church nor the state can set itself up as a mediator. If the church tries to take on that role, it violates the biblical teaching that we are all priests. If the state does so, it violates the truth that all men are kings under a sovereign God. Now we will look at the philosoph philosophical question. And on this slide, you see there are four points that we will discuss. Origin. Uh, which God created everything, knowledge, the Bible is God's revelation of reality, thirdly, the value, God himself is the ultimate value, and fourthly, destiny, God is building a kingdom for his glory and his, pre his pleasure. So let's start with the concept of origin. God created the world out of nothing, and then he created man in his own image. Creation not only owes its origin to God, it owes its continuous existence to him as well because he actively sustains it. Everything is kept in place by God. We are de totally dependent on God for everything we are and everything that we have. He is our creator and we are his creatures. Secondly, the concept of knowledge. Our basic knowledge of the nature of reality is by revelation. We know about God's existence and nature, the origin of man and the cosmos, and the purpose and destiny of creation because God has revealed these things to us in his Bible. Although our knowledge of many things is supplemented by reason, especially when it comes to our knowledge of the created world, we would never be able to answer these big philo philosophical questions of life without God's revelation. Thirdly, value. God himself is of ultimate value. All things were created by him and for him, as you can read in Colossians 1 verse 15 and Hebrews 2 verse 10. Creation exists for God and not God for creation. Man exists for God. I want to repeat that. And not God for man. 
Since God is the ultimate value, we are to value Him and His purposes above all else, even our own lives, our own desires, and our own wants. Man is not the ultimate value, but he is of infinite and eternal value. God created man in his own image. Man is an eternal soul with infinite value, value that God has given him. So if something has value, then there should be someone or something that gives it value. And God is of ultimate value. That's the only being that can ascribe value to something. So although man must never be substituted for God as the ultimate value, he must be regarded as having great value. Fourthly, the concept of destiny. God created for his glory and his pleasure. Therefore, man and the cosmos exist for his glory and pleasure. God is directing history towards the fulfillment of his divine plan. History is going somewhere. God is building his kingdom and directing all of human history towards that end. Man too has purpose. He has a role in God's plan for creation. He finds meaning and purpose in life by submitting to God's purpose for his life and working for the glory of God. His personal destiny is to spend eternity in a personal relationship with his with our creator, loving and serving him forever. As the king in the kingdom of God. So thirdly, we will have the concept of the primary questions that should be answered. And on the slide, you can see we will discuss two points. The biblical Christian has a God-centered worldview. Secondly, the biblical Christian believes in God's applicability to all of life. The biblical Christian sees God. God as the answer to all life's questions and the solution to all the world's problems. God accounts for the origin, nature, role, and destiny of both man and the universe. I would like us to read Ephesians 4 verse 6. One God and Father of us all who is over all and through all and in all. Then we can turn to Acts 17, verse 27. This was so that they would seek God, if perhaps they might grasp for Him and find Him, though He is not far from each one of us. And then we can turn to Colossians 1, verse 16. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth. The biblical Christian holds two fundamental beliefs about the nature of the world. Firstly, he believes that God applies to all questions of life. And secondly, he believes that God is pre-positioning man in every area of life in the form of covenants. So just again, a covenant is a vertical arrangement in which God reaches down to man and prepositions him in every area of life. It differs from a contract, which is purely horizontal arrangement between men. God is prepositioning man in three main areas of life. A personal covenant. By the grace of God, we can know him personally and accomplish his way and will in our lives through the reconciling power of Jesus Christ. Secondly, an ecclesiastical covenant. As a body of believers, we can know God and accomplish his way and will in our church affairs. And thirdly, a civil social covenant. As a society, we can know God and accomplish His way and will in our civil and social, which can be seen as corporate relationships. So God is not only applicable to all of life, but He is also actively reaching out to man to establish His kingdom rule at every level of life, from the personal, which is the smallest level, to the international, which is the largest level. The Christian who thinks biblically realizes that God is pre-positioning man to follow his revealed will in every area of life. Such a Christian thinking is thoroughly God-centered. A thoroughly God-centered worldview sets the biblical Christian apart from all others. 
including Christians who have not yet learned to think biblically. Our thoughts need to be transformed and trans, um, transformed through the word. And um, we need to practice these thoughts so that we can think in a biblical manner. This is one of the fundamental differences between Christianity and religion. Christianity sees God reaching down to man, whereas religion sees man reaching up to God. Our faith is based on grace and not on works. Today, many Christians hold not only a man-centered worldview, but also a man-centered theology. The, marks, the mark of such a theology is the belief that God exists for man rather than man for God. God exists for our pleasure than we exist for his glory. We expect God to conform to our expectations rather than other way around. When God does not act as we demand, we accuse him of being unfair or immoral. This way of thinking makes man the master and the Lord the servant. One popular modern expression of man-centered theology is the quest to know the will of God. This reflects an unbiblical way of thinking. The biblical Christian is not ultimately interested in knowing the will of God. This is anthropological, which is man-centered theology. How many of us want to know the will of your spouse? Surely we want to know him or her personally. When we know them, we will know they will. Knowing the will of God begins and ends with man. But if we know God himself then we do not need to agonize over knowing his will. Now we will look at the practical question. How does someone with a God-centered worldview who believes in God's applicability to all of life plan to live? Dr. Martin discusses the Christian approach to six fears of life. Education, church, law, civil social, arts and economics. The following discussion is a brief summary of his observations. So we will firstly discuss education. The biblical Christian places special emphasis on the need to master reading, writing, and deciphering. We know on the basis of the Bible, therefore we must master the Bible. A biblical education has three aims, three main aims. To know God as applicable to all of life, to know other worldviews fully and fairly, and to analyze everything on the basis of biblical presupposition and a biblical worldview. Secondly, let's look at the sphere of church. The biblical Christian recognizes that the purpose of the church is to point all people to Christ as Savior and Lord. The church exists to reconcile all people to God and to unite the redeemed in Christ. The church must help people understand that God is sovereign over all of life and call them to implement his way and will into their lives. The third sphere is the law. God's nature serves as the standard for right and wrong. God has revealed his will for law and order in society in the Bible. Therefore, law must be based on the Bible. Biblical standards of right and wrong must form the foundation of the justice system in a nation because he is the ultimate moral being and the only being that can determine what is right and wrong. The fourth sphere is civil social. Governance is the gift of God for the orderly procedure of man in a fallen world. If there was no fall, there would be no need for a government. All government is ordained by God to maintain order in society. External governance is necessary because man's internal government is corrupted by the fall. When people have self-government, they do not need civil government. Since God is sovereign over all of life, everything is under God. Therefore, there is no such thing as secular government. All government is from God under God and for God. We do believe in, a separ in the separation of church and state, but we do not believe that the state is secular. The state is a sphere of authority, government, ordained by God to maintain and establish God's principles and purposes in society. The biblical Christian recognizes that God is sovereign over all life. 
The world which does not recognize this must substitute something else in the place of sovereignty. This results in either authoritarianism or anarchy. Authoritarianism arises when man makes something else sovereign in the place of God. Instead of God governing through man, we have the government of man by man for man. This the state becomes sovereign. To the Christian, this is idolatry and blaspheming, allowing the creature to assume the place of the creator. Anarchy, on the other hand, arises when men rebel against the state's sovereign power and seek to abolish the state. Usually this happens because the individual is not in power and sees no opportunity to gain and or influence power. This too is blasphemous because it implies that the state is evil and therefore makes God the author of evil. So without the biblical Christian worldview, the state becomes either worshipped or despised. With the biblical Christian view, worldview, the state is honored as God's agent for maintaining order for man in this fallen world. The fifth sphere is the arts. The biblical Christian should be at the forefront of arts because he has so much to write, sing and paint about. God is not only the ultimate value, but also the ultimate beauty. Furthermore, the arts are one of the most powerful ways to convey a message. Christians should seek to take advantage of the arts to convey the message of Christ. The sixth fear is economics. A biblical Christian believes in private property and free enterprise. The right to own private property is recognized by the Eighth Commandment. You shall not steal. However, ownership must be understood in its biblical con context. We are stewards of the things God entrusted to us and are responsible to God for the way we use them. We should use our possessions to serve God and to help our fellow men. The concept of a free market is also biblical, God-ordained. The free market, rather than the government, should determine prices and wages. But we are accountable to God to ensure that prices and wages are just. The biblical Christian needs to maintain a clear conscience before God by looking at the following. As a buyer, by paying fair prices. As a seller, by charging reasonable prices. And as an employer, by paying human wages. So the biblical Christian believes in the value of work. Work is a form of worship. And Uncle Bert loves saying, work is worship. And I totally agree with that. He works wholly unto God and we find reward in the work that we do. So that concludes our message for tonight with regards to our biblical Christian worldview. And I would like to close in prayer. Father, thank you that we could have this topic set out so wonderfully that we can really have introspection in our lives and see through what lenses are we viewing the world around us. And Father, I ask that the Holy Spirit will come and work in our hearts to convict us of, convict us of all the places in our lives that has been infiltrated through the world's view of humanity and of creation and of destiny and of purpose. Father, transform our minds and our thoughts and clean our thoughts of this world's um, viewing of everything around us. And Father, I ask the word to take place and ground in our hearts that our thoughts will be focused on the biblical view of seeing everything around us. Father, thank you for your love and your peace and the Holy Spirit that resides in us. Be with each one of our loved ones tonight. Protect them. Take care of them. And Father, I ask that you will bless everyone that has put so much effort into making these Crossroads productions um, a success. Bless them, Father, and we thank you um, in Jesus' name. Amen. A wonderful, blessed evening to you all. <laughs>